How's it going everyone? Maryland here, and that's right, it's time for more of the Pokemon Sword and Shield walkthrough. So we're gonna be checking out some of the wild area today. Let me just state, this place is absolutely enormous. It is huge, absolutely massive. It's a lot of fun, but there's absolutely no way I'm going to cover all of it in this one video. I'll probably have a follow-up video later on, but I do want to at least show you a few of the basics with the wild area. And of course, get over to Motostoke, which is that city you can see off in the background there. Look at that. Ooh, that's Motostoke, way off that way. I also keep calling it Moto Spoke, and I have no re no reason why. It's, it's just, again, one of those name things. And between there and here, countless new Pokemon waiting to be met. Oh, hello! And if it isn't Sonia, Miss Sonia. My gran gave me a proper earful in her own way. Those two young trainers are setting out on a journey, but what are you doing with your life? That sounds rough, or ouch, Professor. Ouch. Ah, uh, never you mind that. Nothing to worry yourselves over. Besides, I've been quite curious about that Pokemon you two met in the forest. I've been thinking I should look into it, so the timing works out fine. If I discover something really huge, then maybe even Gran will admit I got some talent. Yikes, being an adult has got its own challenges, eh? I said you needn't worry about it. I'm glad to be on the road. Really, it's been ages. It'll be fun to fish and camp and rough it outside again. Well, I'm off to go stick my head in as many of those red glowing dens as I can find. I'm gonna battle the snot out of a bunch of Dynamax Pokemon and fill in another page of the tale of my legend! Alright, well good luck with that, Hop. What cheek! Dynamax Pokemon are really on another level, you know? You better Dynamax your partner Pokemon too if you want to take on opponents that strong. You'll find spots here and there in the wild area that emit a red beam of light. If you think you're up to it, check them out. There'll be Dynamax Pokemon lurking inside. So with that, how about I send you off with a little treat from me? Very helpful item here, the Pokemon Box Link. Yes, you can access your storage now from your party, similar to Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's, Let's Go Pikachu. I'll show you that in a moment. With a Pokemon Box Link, you'll be able to put Pokemon from your team into your boxes or take Pokemon from your boxes to add them to your team. Nice, right? So go wild catching as many Pokemon as you like and fill in some more of your Pokedex. The wild area is waiting for you. This is the start of your real adventure. Oh yeah. It is a very big area. <laughs> like, it's great. I actually really like this place. It's a lot of fun. You'll see a bunch of those red beams of light. Those are the Pokemon dens that she was talking about. And occasionally you'll find some that are purplish, pinkish, kind of like that, with a little bit of extra attitude there. Those are ones that have um, Pokemon with, a higher Dynamax level, potentially hidden abilities. They're really like the rarer ones. Um, okay, but before I do much else, there's something rather important. So let me show you the boxes here. If I press R, it will then bring up the Pokemon boxes menu. Now you can do this at the Rotomi, Ro Rotomi, Ro Ro I don't know, whatever the PC is. You can do that normally, but really this is even faster. So yeah, you can just access your box straight from your party menu, which is really nice. Now, if you deposit Pokemon in the PC, it doesn't heal them. So you can't use this for free healing anywhere. That is a thankful change that they added when they introduced this functionality in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Um, yeah, so you can, of course, move Pokemon around by pressing A and then selecting Move, similar to older games, but there's not really, you know, since there's no touch screen, well, actually, I don't know. Maybe you can drag and drop them on the touch screen. I'm playing this docked. But if you want an easy way to just quickly move things around, just press Y. You'll notice up in the top left, it now says multi-purpose. Or you can press it again so there's a green arrow to select everything uh, that you want. Like, let's say I want to move a whole bunch of Pokemon to a different box. Well, this is how I would do that. Otherwise, if it's the red arrow, then you get all these extra little options here. And if it's the blue arrow, you can just quickly move them around without any uh, any pop-up menu there. So very handy, make sure you have the right mode. Okay, so there is a very helpful Pokemon to have 
when you're going to the wild area. There's actually two of them, at least that are really easy to get. There's Eevee, if you have Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, but you need to have the ability Runaway. Now, Eevee isn't guaranteed to have Runaway. It could have, I believe it's adaptability for the gift Eevee you get there. But otherwise, Nickit, it's capable of having either Unburden or Runaway for its ability, for its normal abilities. So if you can go back and get a Nickit with Runaway, this will work just as well. But having a Pokemon with Runaway is really important. And I guess I'll show you why. All right, here, let's take the C dot, and I'm just going to put it in the front position of my party here. I also want to take this Pikachu. Um, we're going to get rid of Squavit for just a moment, because I do want to show something fun off with the Pikachu and the Eevee. Of course, we can Gigantamax them. I kind of mentioned that last time. All right, so yeah, in the wild area, you will find it is absolutely massive. In fact, it's broken up into many different areas. In fact, I think there's like 17 or 18 if you count the meetup spot. So this whole area here, this area in green, this is the wild area, and it continues past this bridge here. And there's even more back here. Now, this is more of a dangerous area. You're not really going to be able to catch anything over here, which I'll explain about in a moment. But you actually can visit everything except for this and this. Because you need to be able to ride the water for that. But yeah, you can explore it freely. There's items, there's Pokemon. There's a lot of stuff for you to pick up all around. But there's also tough Pokemon. And you'll find these strong Pokemon just kind of like roaming around. Like this Diggersby here. This thing is no joke. So let's just kind of like get near it and see if it'll notice me. Uh-oh. So thankfully, you usually have a little bit of time. Oh, you don't even want to chase me. <laughs> What's the fun in that? Sometimes you'll find Pokemon that just want to hunt you down. Also, as you walk through the area, you will find some, uh, some notes for your first trip through. In this case, you can use the right stick to rotate the camera when you're in the wild area. And if you press the right stick, you'll find you can see a wider view of things. Press the L button to look straight ahead again. Yeah, this is really important. You can move the camera angle. Like, I guess I've been in here for a while outside of this save, so it's kind of second nature to me. But that's really cool to have a Pokemon game like that. And I do recommend pressing in on the right control stick so you'll zoom out a little bit. It definitely gives you a much better field of view. You don't have to, though. And then if ever you're like, oh, I just want to look straight ahead, just press the L button and it will center you there. Okay, so do you want to chase me down, huh? No, you don't. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Fine, let's just get into a fight with this thing, because, I mean, who wouldn't want to catch a Mudsdale at this point in the game, right? So, whenever you enter a fight and it says you encountered a very strong-looking whatever Pokemon, that means you can't catch it. You're unable to. It won't let its guard down. You are bound to only a certain level of Pokemon. Like, you cannot catch Pokemon that are at a higher level than your gym badges will allow. Meaning, I'm in a very bad spot here. This Mudsdale will completely destroy my team. Remember I was telling you about the usefulness of the Poké Dolls? Yes, that's what they're for. If ever you get into trouble, you can use a Poké Doll and you'll be able to run away. Because remember, the chance of you running away is based on your speed stat versus the opponent's speed stat, and since these things have very high levels, uh, yeah, you're unlikely to be able to run away. Now, where you can absolutely make sure you're safe is if you have a Pokémon with the ability Runaway, like Eevee or Nickit, because then you can run away freely from any Pokémon. You don't have to worry about, you know, your speed stat, you can just go there. Um, there are- whoa! <laughs> Stop! Uh, there are wild Pokemon all over the place. There's also weather conditions that affect which wild Pokemon will spawn. So if you're viewing the map and then you press the plus button, you'll see the weather conditions for each of these areas. You can also see it if you look at the name of the area up in the top right there. It says what weather condition it is, or at least gives you a symbol. So, yeah, the Pokemon that you run into, 
they vary based on the weather conditions you find. Now, there are some weather conditions that are unlocked later in the game. For instance, Sandstorm and Snowstorm are not available until you've gone to this town up here called Hammerlock. And then there's also a heavy fog condition, which is only available after you've beaten the game. So, yeah, um, keep that in mind if you're looking at different, like, encounter tables, such as the ones over on my website. But yeah, if you're looking for a specific Pokemon or you're just wanting to know what is in each area, please check the link in the description of this video or check out the, uh, the navigation on the side if you're viewing this video on my website because there's a lot more in-depth kind of coverage of the Pokemon in each area. And I'll update it frequently, don't worry. But yeah, anyway, there's also the Pokemon that you see in the wild like in the overworld, and then there are the random encounters, as I call them, which are the ones that will shake in the shaking grass. They are entirely different. Like, see, here's an example of the shaking grass, the random encounter, if you will. It's a buddy you in this case. Now, another nice thing about the Pokemon in the wild area is they're all at a pretty decent level. These ones in the first area, the rolling fields, which is where I'm at right now. They're the weakest of the bunch, but they're still pretty, pretty decent level. But you can find things at level 15, no problem, if you look around. In fact, you'll find some at a higher level, but I believe 15 is the max we can catch Pokemon at. All right, so let's talk about Pokemon Dens. Those are these things with the red beams of light. Some of them don't have the beams of light, and you should still check them out. But these are where you'll fight in the max raid battles, which are really fun. You'll be able to Dynamax your Pokemon, you'll fight against a Dynamax Pokemon, and you can party up with up to three other players, either random players from online or friends that you have. So it's pretty cool. And if you don't have enough friends, or if you just want to do it solo, you can. You'll get NPC trainers to help you out. Now, whether you want to fight these battles or not, definitely go to any of these dens that you see a red beam of light because you'll earn 300 watts for every den that you investigate that has one of these red beams of light. And they do respawn periodically, too. All right, so this is a little explanation of max raid battles. Defeat a Dynamax Pokemon, and you'll get a chance at catching it. Additionally, there are some rare items that you can only obtain by battling Dynamax Pokemon. When wild Pokemon Dynamax, they become incredibly powerful. They may unleash multiple moves in a row and take other actions you won't see in a regular battle. Working together with other trainers will be key as you take on these Dynamax Pokemon together as a team of four. So in this case, it's a silhouette. We don't know what this is. It looks like a Caterpie to me. But you can also see there's a star in the top left corner. That indicates it's a one star raid. So it's the easiest of them all. It's not going to be very difficult. And you can also see the type of Pokemon. So in this case, it's a bug type. That should narrow it down. That plus a silhouette means it's a Caterpie, which isn't overly great, but it'll be a first example, a great first example. So these options here are very important. I'm not gonna go into the, you know, playing with other players right now. This is not like a full guide on Dynamax, but just something you can do during your first trip through. So what's really important is whatever Pokemon is in your lead position, is the one that you'll send out by default, but you don't have to do that. Make sure you choose switch Pokemon and choose a Pokemon that you're comfortable with sending out. Uh, Score Buddy would be a really good case here, but I promised I would show you some Dynamax or Gigantamaxing. So for this fight, let's send out this Eevee and we'll use that. I guess I already had it selected, whoops. Okay, so if you just want to play with NPCs, choose Don't Invite Others. You shouldn't need to worry about having other players help you in these one-star and even two-star raids. They're not very difficult, but they are a lot of fun. Oh yeah, look at that big old Caterpie! Now, unfortunately, the, uh, the Gigantamax bonus Pokemon you get here, they're not that strong early on, but it's still fun. Okay, so this is the first time you'll have a chance to even use the Dynamax option. But for any Pokemon that has that symbol that you see above the word Dynamax on their status menu, for instance, let me show you here. Uh, 
Yeah, see, Eevee? Next to the Pokeball, it has that symbol. That means it's capable of Gigantamaxing, which is basically a special form that gives it a unique move. In this case, G-Max Cuddle. So it will transform any normal type moves into this G-Max move. But additionally, you'll get max moves for any of your non-Gigantamax Pokemon that have much increased power and have a lot of really cool effects. So let's go ahead and use this. Most importantly, I want to show this off. So only one trainer in the battle can Dynamax their Pokemon, or Gigantamax, if you have a Gigantamax-capable Pokemon. Look at this Eevee. <laughs> it's so fluffy! Now, when you Gigantamax, or Dynamax, really, your HP will increase by a sizable amount. By default, it's 50% and all of your moves transform into the max moves. So in this case, this Caterpie has this Bug-type max move that just completely destroyed that Wubbuffet. And it also has the added effect of lowering the entire party's special attack. Yeah, so these Dynamax Pokémon, they can hit pretty hard, but thankfully for your Dynamax Pokémon, you should be okay. Alright, so that is quite the cuddle there, huh? <laughs> now, your Dynamax Pokemon will only be Dynamax for three turns. After three turns, they will revert to their original form. And yeah, you'll be out of luck. But try to get the most out of them while you're in the battle. Ugh. Now, the wild Dynamax Pokemon, they will remain in their Dynamax form the whole time. Oh, great. So, he brought back his Wubbuffet. Nice. Sometimes that can happen. If a Pokemon faints, it'll be brought back. However, you will still lose the Dynamax Raid, or the Max Raid, if your, uh, your whole team has four Pokemon faint. Or if ten turns have elapsed. Or whatever the condition is on the bottom left when you're starting the fight. Anyway, I've taken out this Caterpie, reduced its HP all the way down. So at this point, you'll have a chance to catch the Pokemon. You can choose to either catch or don't catch. Well, I want to catch it, so let's use a Pokeball. Your odds of catching it are really darn good for these early raids. Don't worry too much about getting fancy. But enjoy the, uh, the tension. As you, uh, you get to see the Pokeball, the gigantic Pokeball shake. And just like that, I've caught a Caterpie. Now, it isn't gonna be a permanently Dynamax Caterpie, don't worry. But it is a Caterpie, and it will be pretty strong. But, most importantly, take a look at all of these items you get for either catching or defeating the max raid battle. Now, the items you get do depend on the Pokemon, so for Bug-type Pokemon, you're more likely to get Bug-type TRs, as they're called, which I'll explain in a moment here. But that's that Leech Life thing. Also, Balm Mushroom, that's really good. And Experience Candies, those are very handy. So yeah, it's very worth your time doing these Dynamax battles. The max raids. You get a lot of good stuff, and a lot of good Pokemon, too. So this Caterpie, for instance, it's level 16. <laughs> That's really nice. That's really nice indeed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I really want to add this Butterfree to my team, but it's nice to see that I have it there. Let's go ahead and send it to a box, though. Don't need it. All right, so yeah, that's the, uh, the max raid process. And after the fight, your Pokemon, they shouldn't be healed up. So if you need healing, you can you can do that, and uh, you probably should do that too if you're going around doing a lot of fighting. But let's talk about these candies really fast. So you're probably familiar with the rare candy. It raises your level by one. But the experience candies, these give you an amount of experience based on the candy. So for instance, let's use this experience candy XS. How about we use it on my Aracuda here? You can choose how many you want to give. Let's just give one for right now. And just like that, 100 experience. So since I got five of those experience candies XS, 
That's essentially 500 experience from that fight, which isn't too bad. And of course, there's the experience candy S. Let's use that as well. And that's 800 more. So thanks to that candy, my Aracuda has caught up. So it's a great way to train up your Pokemon too, but not specifically the Pokemon you use for the battle. So let's say you have a really strong Pokemon. You can have that go around doing the, uh, the max raids get the candies, and then use those candies to power up your weaker Pokemon. So very handy. Use these early on rather than your rare candies. Save these for later on. Now Dynamax candies, these can be used to raise the Dynamax level of your Pokemon. When you Dynamax, you will gain HP based on the Dynamax level that you see there. So I believe the starting point is 50% more than your normal amount of HP, but at max, I believe it's all the way up to double, which is pretty good. That'll give you a lot of extra health for the fight. Is it necessary? No, at least not early on, but it's a good idea for any Pokemon that you are finding yourself consistently Dynamaxing. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to this one over here, because you'll find, sometimes you'll find these rare dens. Let's see what this one has. Uh, I believe that is a, uh, what is it, blip bug? So let's go ahead and switch Pokemon. That's actually really convenient because it's weak to fire. So let's use my score bunny here. And let's not invite others. And let's go ahead and fight this thing. So it'll have a little bit of a glow to it if it's a rarer Pokemon. Usually it'll have a higher Dynamax level. The potential for hidden abilities. That is loud. And uh, yeah, a whole bunch of other stuff too. They're definitely worthwhile. All right, so let's go ahead and Dynamax. This should be a much better fight because I'm using a strong Pokemon. Let's Dynamax my score bunny. Bunny. All right, let's do this. Wow, looks like my partners are actually helping out pretty well. Yeah, it's kind of luck of the draw with what allies you get if you're fighting solo. Sometimes you'll get really good ones. Sometimes they'll be kind of underwhelming. Oh, wow. I would have expected that to do a little bit more, huh? Oh, well, one of the nice advantages of the fire type moves specifically is it will activate the sunlight, which is really nice. It'll power up your fire type moves in the future, too. Like every type of max move has a different side effect to it, which most of them are very powerful. It's very good to uh, to use those max moves. However, most of your status moves, they'll just be max guard, which is kind of like a protect. So you lose out on your ability to do a lot of the helpful status moves. So keep that in mind. Oh, the tension. Hey, we got it. All right, so this should be a pretty strong blip bug. And look at all the rewards I get from that. Seven Experience Candies XS, two Experience Candies S. So that's like, what, 1600 experience plus 700? Wow, not too bad. And some good items too. Another Leech Life. Uh, let's take a look at this Blip Bug. Level 15, so already it's very strong. Compound Eyes, so that's nice. Um, doesn't really have a lot of good moves, but might be a better addition to the team than anyone else at the moment. What do I have in my party right now? Do I already have a blip bug? I don't remember if I deposited it. Yeah, I think I deposited it. Uh, let's get rid of this C dot for right now. We'll keep it along. Okay, so yeah, that was uh, another example of a max raid. I should show you the Pikachu as well. Oh, before I do, You'll find that there are dens that don't have 
any Pokemon. And I'll go back and get that item, don't worry. So, if you see a den like this, it means that there's no Pokemon there. There is an item that you can use, if you happen to get lucky, that will summon one to the spot. But even if you don't have that, still check these out. Because you'll get 50 watts. And just to reiterate, you can go up to any of these Max Raid or Pokemon Dens. You can go up to them, press A, get your watts, and you don't have to fight in the raid to get the watts. So even if you're not feeling like battling, do yourself a favor and get those anyway, because you can exchange those for some very useful items. So let's take a look. There was one other thing I didn't explain, and this will be explained later in the game. Like, once we get to the next town, there's a much more thorough explanation of it, but... What is a TR? A TR stands for Technical Record. It's kind of like a TM, except it's more like the old days of TMs, where it's single use. So in this case, I have two Leech Life TRs. These are usually really powerful moves. You can get a lot of good ones just for fighting the, uh, the Pokemon in the max raids, like the one stars. You can get really good moves early on in the game by doing that. So it's strongly recommended to do so. But just keep in mind, they are single use and, you know, you won't be able to use them multiple times. However, they're not like impossible to get or anything. So by all means, I'm crazy strong and flush with cash. Why won't anyone battle me? Uh, you know what? I actually think she's correct. I'm not going to do this because I don't think I'm strong enough right yet. But I think she gives you a lot of money if you are able to beat her. During your first trip through, you might not want to do that. You might want to hold off. Okay, so the goal, just so it's clear, in order to progress in the game, you need to go over to those stairs right there. That's the most direct route, uh, or the direct thing you need to do. Everything else in the wild area right now is totally optional, but you can explore it, which is a lot of fun. So just keep that in mind. Again, you start from like up there on that hill kind of area. All you need to do is just kind of hug this lake here and just walk over there. Or you could go along the path here. Whoa! Tyro, no, don't do it! Yeah, if you just follow this path, you'll get there no problem. And that's all you need to do to actually clear the area, which, of course, is important. It's good to make progress, but it's not at all unexpected to spend a lot of time in this wild area. There are so many Pokémon and they will vary based on game. Like, for instance, in Pokemon Sword, you'll run into Vulpix here. In Pokemon Shield, you run into, uh... You're not a Vulpix. <laughs> you're a random encounter. You'll run into Growlithe instead. So, again, if you have a Pokemon with Runaway, very handy to have it out. As your lead Pokemon, just make sure it doesn't faint. So another thing that's rather helpful that you may want to do is go to camp. This can be used to heal up your Pokemon. It's kind of like Pokemon Refresh or, uh, what was it? Shoot, I don't even remember from Gen 6. Pokemon Ami, that's right. And it's a cute little mode. All right, so in your Pokemon camp, you and your Pokemon can play together and even eat together, growing closer through the experience. If your Pokemon grow very close to you, they may even try extra hard for you during battle. You can play using your Joy-Con, too. If you slide your Joy-Con off your system, you can wave one about to throw a ball for your Pokemon to retrieve, or wave a Poketoy for their delight. If you waggle that Poketoy, you might even entice Pokemon hanging out farther back in your camp to come play. When you set up camp in the wild area, you'll be able to play with up to three other trainers at a time. All kinds of people and Pokemon might stumble across or stumble upon your camp, even those you've never met before, so get to know them as you play together. It's a cute mode. It's kind of silly. <laughs> Look at that happy Eevee. So you can press A to call over the Pokemon that you're looking at, and they should come over to you. And then you can press A again. You can chat, see what they're up to. Okay, well, it seems like this Eevee wants to do other things. So, let's take out this toy. You can press Y to change your toy. And, in this case, I can press A to shake it. If I had my Joy-Con out, I could also use that to wag the thing. But I don't have it right now. Playing with the Pro Controller, in case you were wondering. And if other Pokemon are nearby, they might get in on the action, too. Uh, let's switch to the Pokeball. We'll just lob that over there and see who ends up grabbing it. Whoa! 
Oh, I thought that my Aracuda was gonna go get it. Where are you going? Man, no one wants that ball. Come on, Eevee. Yamper, that's literally your job! Why are you so angry? Hello. <laughs> oh, good Eevee. All right, yeah, so, hey, Square Bunny, here. <laughs> they like it when you play with them. Okay, well, anyway, there's a lot more here. I'll probably mess around with this later. But one thing you can do, you can cook some curry using berries that you have. Cook up a fine curry while out camping by selecting ingredients and berries of your liking. Your curries will get more delicious if you choose to do things like using rare ingredients or adding lots of berries, too. Once you start cooking, fan the flames with your fan to keep things hot enough, and stir things up with your ladle, the ladle, I'm sorry, to keep them moving. Only don't go overboard, you don't want to spill. The last step will be to add a bit of soul into it at just the right timing, and you'll have made a masterpiece for your Pokémon to enjoy. After you finish cooking, it'll be time for everyone to dig in together. Eating a tasty curry can have a number of effects on the Pokémon that are at your camp, including restoring their HP and making them feel more friendly towards you. So, I don't really have a lot of ingredients at the moment. This is not a, by all means, this is not a full in-depth guide to cooking. But we're just gonna do a little bit of it, just to kind of show you what you can do. So let's add a few orange berries to the mix. And you can kind of read the description to get an idea of what it does. Uh, it has no sweetness, adds a distinctive flavor. There are other items that you can add too, I just don't have any. Um, so, I don't know. Let's give it a... let's give it a Pecha Berry to add a little bit of sweetness. Okay, let's start cooking. Alright, so, toss the berries in there, and then you need to fan the flames. You can do this either by waving your Joy-Con or mashing the A button. Although, what I find if you're playing with, like, a Pro Controller or pretty much anything, just mash A ZL and ZR, and you will fan these flames really fast. I don't know if that actually makes it better, though, but it feels like it. Okay, now to stir, you have to move the control stick. And it seems like it is easy, but it's not, like, perfect. I don't know how to describe it. Like, I'm sure there's a rhythm to it, but it's... Honestly, I've found some difficulty with it sometimes. All right, and then this last bit, you just have to wait. And there we go. Press A to throw your heart into it, and that should help. All right, well, let's see how the curry turned out. Who's hungry? It's got some grub. Curry. Very basic curry. I don't know how I made that with just berries, but oh well. <laughs> Look at Eevee. Hey, it didn't turn out too bad. Love effect class, two star. Your Pokemon's HP was restored by half, your Pokemon gained a few experience points, and Eevee and the rest of the party got friendly towards you. So yeah, some nice effects. Definitely pretty cool. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh, one last thing, you can hold in R to zoom in, which can be kind of fun. It's fun seeing the Pokemon interact with each other, too. And after your camping experience, ta-da! Some real experience for your Pokemon. Very nice. Okay, so as I said, there are tons of Pokemon here. Like, if I were to try to show you all of them, it would take an absolute eternity. But there are a few things that I do want to show you that will be extremely helpful. Like, especially if you're looking for just some very strong Pokemon. So first of all, this thing, Stuffle right here, it's a great Pokemon. It's a normal fighting type. It evolves into Beware. And if yours has the Fluffy ability, oh yeah, see their Blip Bug healed up, which is very nice. If yours has the Fluffy ability, it will be just fantastic. It gives it a weakness to fire, essentially, but it will have the physical damage the Pokemon receives. So it just turns it into something that can take so many hits. Like, let's use Double Kick here, because it should be weak to it. That is a super effective move. And it only did that much. That's a pretty good indicator that it has Fluffy. It's also adorable, but look at how much that did with just a tackle. Let's see if I can catch this, uh, this Stuffle here. 
Again, that's definitely on my recommended to catch list. It becomes really good as a beware. It's even pretty darn good as a stuffle too, so certainly recommended. Certainly. Uh, let's see, getting some more levels, which is really nice. You'll gain a lot of experience in the wild area, which is a good thing. Okay, so let's take a look at you really fast here. So, yep, you have Fluffy. That's really nice. And yeah, it's normal fighting, so moves like Tackle will do more damage thanks to the same type attack bonus. But it's just a really dependable Pokemon. Like, I strongly recommend it if you're looking for, you know, just like a good overall team suggestion. Another really good Pokemon to get is Growlithe if you're playing Pokemon Shield. And there's a really good reason for that. Um, let me go over... Oh, what do we have here? The wild area is overflowing with a special sort of energy measured in watts. You can gather watts yourself from glowing Pokemon dens and glowing Pokemon in the wild. You'll also find trainers in the wild area who are willing to give you all sorts of items if you'll just give them some of your watts. Yes, that's right. So here is the stairway to Motostoke. This is where you need to go in order to proceed. I kind of mentioned that already, but I figured I'd show it to you. But there's also some trainers in the area nearby. So this guy's the Camping King. He will tell you about camping. You can change your uh, tent color if you want. You can rate your curry decks, because as you make more types of curry, you'll add it to your curry decks, which is just kind of like a little mini game. I don't need to do any of that right now. And then there's this guy here. You can spend some watts on some items. Like, look at this! Heat Wave, Heavy Slam, Thunderbolt. And even though it might seem like a lot, like 5,000 watts, you get it pretty darn fast. Pretty darn fast, actually. So, uh, let me, let me go check out some of these raids over here. Oh, there's a Vulpix. I did kind of want to get a Vulpix. All right, well, I got the Vulpix. That's good. <laughs> let's take a look at it really fast. Uh, let's see. That's a pretty bad nature for it, not gonna lie, but yeah, we'll, we'll take that. Send you to the box. Actually, I don't even need Vulpix. I'm not going to be using it because I already have a fire type. Thank you, Score Bunny. But if you don't have a fire type, Vulpix or Growlithe, especially Growlithe, really good choice because you can evolve it right away and I'll show you where. But here's a, an NPC you can talk to. I fished up something brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. So for 100 watts, you can pay her and she will give you an item. Three pearls in this case, but sometimes you can get like three big pearls or sometimes you can even get a pearl string from her. Probably even other items too, that's just what I've noted. And you can use those and sell them to get some money. So it's a good way to make money, especially because watts are pretty easy to get. All right, uh, I'm gonna check some of these out. I'll let you know if there's anything interesting. Oh, it's the fisherman again, the fisher lady. All right, what will you give me now? There we go, a big pearl. Yeah, great way to make money. Ooh, so there's a timber here. That might be a little tough for me because I don't actually have anything that is effective against fighting. I guess we could give it a go though. Um, actually, you know what? What I could do, I could use my Pikachu. <laughs> All right, I might end up losing this one, but let's use this Pikachu. I promised I'd show you this thing. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Time to get big. Uh, I don't actually have an electric type damaging move, so that's a shame. <laughs> that's why the Pikachu is definitely not quite as good as the Eevee. We'll get one soon enough, though, although I'm probably not going to use this Pikachu. But let's just see how Gigantamax Pikachu looks. <laughs> it's the old Chubby Chew! Yep, all the way back from Gen 1. I love that throwback, it's really great. Yeah, this is gonna take a while, unfortunately. No, my Pikachu got smaller. 
No. <laughs> yeah, this isn't going very well at all. All right, well, somehow I managed to take down that timber. <laughs> it was definitely not easy with my poor allies here. And of course, using a Pikachu that doesn't even have an electric type move, but yeah. I just wanted to show you that Gigantamax Pikachu. And I got the timber, nice. Okay, so what did I get for that? I got five experience candies. XS, one S, but also look at this, Aura Sphere, ooh. That's a good move. I mean, probably not for timber, but you know. Let's take a look at you. I know this thing had bulk up. That was a pain. Yeah, look at that, bulk up, sheer force, oof. Strong. You'd actually be a pretty good addition. Well, that's the thing. As you catch more Dynamax Pokemon in the wild area here, you can uh, you can use those Pokemon to then go fight other Dynamax Pokemon and add more to your team, which is really cool. Oh yeah, one other thing you can find. You can sometimes find these berry trees in the wild, and if you shake them, you'll get some berries. You can keep shaking them for a while, too. But the more you shake it, the more chance there will be for a wild Pokemon to attack you and then steal the berries. Ah! Like this! My berries! <laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta watch out for them. You'll usually find Squabbit, but you can also sometimes find Cherubi here. Now, unfortunately, if you do get attacked by a Pokemon, then you won't get all of the berries, I'm pretty sure. I think they'll run off with some of them, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, they took all the Orin berries, but at least you still get some berries, so that's good. But yeah, you'll find those all around. And also, you know what, that item? <laughs> there was a sparkling item on the ground, a hidden item, that I said I'd go back for, and I totally didn't. It's somewhere over there, but the point is, they are items that will respawn. You'll find them just, you know, kind of like at the bases of trees. You'll find them by flowers. You'll find them all over the place and you can check back later and they will reappear. So like in this case, big mushroom, very nice. Might be a different item too. So that fancy apple, I can use that while cooking curry. Oh, vile plume. Too bad it's going to be really strong. I can't actually fight it. Oh, here's a guy over here. Spend my watts. Dive ball. Wishing piece. Yeah, that's that wishing piece I was telling you about. You can use that for a uh, uh, Pokemon den to summon a max raid battle. So this area over here, this is kind of in the northwestern area. This is the Watchtower Ruins. The Pokemon that you find in the wild, in the overworld here, so the ones kind of roaming around, they are, uh, well, they're pretty high level. Let me show you. Even something like this Purloin, ooh, it's a very strong Purloin, so you have to be careful. Yeah, level 26, that's not good. However, I should note that you can run into a lot of the same Pokemon in this area. Like, if you want a ghost, you can find reasonable level Pokemon in the uh, the Shaking Grass. If I could find that. There's also this item right here. Free Max Revive. Might want to hold on to that for later, but it's there. Uh, where is that Shaking Grass? I'd love to... There we go. Ah, yes. Well, it's not really exciting because it's a Wingull and it's raining right now. But yeah, you could find some ghosts and stuff that are at a catchable level if you go here when, uh, or if you just find the random encounters, the shaking grass. All right, so one helpful item to get it. Do you see that big rock over there? Yeah, that's a kind of dangerous place. You can get there by, well, from this lake area here. You just have to find this little ramp going down, follow that path through South Lake Mylock, and then Cross that bridge over there. You could also just go around the edge to get over there. But yeah, let me hop over there in just a moment. All right, so here's the bridge. Let's go ahead and cross this thing. 
Gyarados in the water. Can't encounter that just yet. Hey, buddy. So this is the giant seat. And it's a really good place to go. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember if this guy is always here. But if ever you see quick balls for sale for watts, get them. They're only 50 watts each, and they are extremely good for catching Pokemon. If you use them on the first turn of battle, stock up by like 40 or so, and then just use it when you start a fight because it's so cheap and they have a really high chance of catching the Pokemon if you use it on the first turn of the battle. So yeah, I'm definitely buying 40 of those. Track this guy down because that makes it so easy to catch things that you don't really even need to think about it. Now, this giant's, uh, what was this place called? <laughs> the giant's, uh, there's a lot of different giant things. Giant's seat. Yeah, you see up here there's giant's mirror, giant's cap. Yeah, it, it gets a little confusing sometimes. But anyway, you want to be over by this giant rock here. Preferably with a Pokemon with Runaway, so you can easily get away from the higher level Pokemon here. Everything is a high level over in this area, so you won't be able to catch anything. Oh, which, you know what, I completely forgot to mention. I don't have my trainer card right now, but at this point, you're bound to only a certain level of Pokemon. You can't catch Pokemon at a higher level than that. It would be indicated on your card. Pretty feather over here. Uh, where is that item? Oh, right. Never mind, it's actually over here. It's behind the, uh, this big rock. Over by this cliffside here. In fact, I think I see it right there. Yeah. Look at this. It's a nice little TM. So it's reusable. You can use it as many times as you want. TM81 Bulldoze. A nice 60 power ground type move that also lowers the speed of the uh, opponents that it hits. It does hit everyone in a double battle though. So you got to be watchful for that. And then also over here... Hold on, let me grab this. See, that's like a free quick ball right there. Over here by this tree, just a little bit to the north of that, is another useful item. The leftovers! Very handy. You can equip this on your Pokemon as a held item, sort of like the Orenberry I showed earlier, and it will restore some of that Pokemon's HP between turns. So it's a little risky going over here because there are some strong Pokemon but if you have a Pokemon with Runaway, or if you have enough Pokedolls, it should be easy enough to make the journey over there. Alright, so this bridge that you see over here by... Oh wait, item... Sparkly Thing! By uh, North Lake Mylock. This is a, uh... Well, <laughs> let's call it a Dragon Quest bridge. When you cross over here, all of the Pokemon are going to be at a much higher level. You are, of course, free to check this area out, but I'll tell you straight up, there's going to be nothing that you can catch over there. In fact, this guy will even warn you. You'll be amazed after crossing the bridge. What's so amazing? The Pokemon that live on the other side, they're so strong. You probably won't be able to catch them unless you have several gym badges, though. You'll be able to go through here later on, don't worry. And you can actually go through here right now. But you're probably not going to be able... Well, you're not going to be able to catch anything. However, there are some very helpful items that I recommend picking up. And the first is, like, after you cross that bridge, just go to the left and walk towards the wall because you'll see this item right here, and it is a Firestone. Now, remember what I was telling you about Growlithe and Vulpix, how you can evolve them right away? There's your right away. They evolve by using a Firestone on them. Also, do you remember the, the move reminder? How you can now relearn moves at a Pokemon Center? <laughs> I'll show you next time, but let's just say Arcanine gets some really good moves and it is absolutely worthwhile. There are a few other items in the area over here. You can, of course, freely explore. If you have a Pokemon with Runaway, like I said, I mean, it's perfectly safe. You can just run away from everything and you can get all of the... Uh, well, none of these dens will have any Pokemon in them, but you'll still get 50 watts for each den, so that's really handy. And there's a lot of static items, the one-time item pickups that you can find, like that Firestone, that are very helpful.
Also, the music totally changes as you go further through this side. And I love this music so much. All right, so this one's a little bit out of the way. Let's try to show you where it is. So there's the, whoa, big Noivern. There's that bridge. And then if you're kind of hugging the edge of Motostoke here, you'll find that there's this little area nestled back here that has a den. Might as well get some watts from that. And it also has a water stone, which you can use to evolve several Pokemon. And that's definitely a good thing. Things that come to mind. Um, Lombre, Eevee into Vaporeon. Although you might not want to do that with your Gigantamax Eevee. I don't actually know if you can. You know what? Let's try it. All right. So where's that? Uh, where's that item? Yeah, you can't even use it on the Gigantamax Eevee, which is good because that would stink if you accidentally did that and then you couldn't Gigantamax it anymore. Okay, also, yeah, you might see a house all the way over there. Let's check that out really fast. It's kind of between these two big bridges that you see here. It's essentially a Pokemon daycare, Pokemon nursery as they're called now. So you can use that for breeding Pokemon if you want. But also, there are some useful NPCs in the area. Oh, big beware that you can pay some watts to and they'll dig up some good items for you. Well, potentially, it's very random. All right, so these two right here. Uh, hey, all right. We two brothers are known as the Digging Duo. We're digging up treasure here, see? You've got a fair bit of luck finding us here. If you'd like to spot us some watts, we'll dig you up some handy treasures for your adventure. Yeah, so this one, oh shoot, I need like a little bit more. It costs 500 watts, but you can get a lot of good items. You'd have to save your progress though but it is, it's very worthwhile. Very worthwhile indeed. Let's go ahead and see what he'll dig up for uh, for 500 watts. Now you have to save beforehand so you can't just reset if you don't get things you like. But for this batch of 500 watts, I get some Stardust. You can have him keep digging a Moonstone. That's pretty nice. Oh, wow, he only got two items. <laughs> I had one time where he got 23. So let me get this, so I'll be up to 500 again, because there's actually the two brothers here. Some of them will get better items. Like this guy has, uh, what did he say? Hold on, what, what did you say? They have like a little bit of difference. I have no lack of skill, but when it comes to stamina, my bro's the best. Well, I don't know about that, he only got two items. But yeah, you can get some really good stuff, like the evolutionary stones, a rare bone, which I can sell for some money. Wishing piece, that's pretty good. Fossilized Dino, Fossilized Bird, and that's it. Well, not exactly the best, but certainly not the worst. Very handy. They're worthwhile spending your watts on. A little bit costly, but still very worth it. Um, let's see. So again, we can't really fight any of the Pokemon over here, but this guy sells Dust Balls as well as some decent TRs, which is pretty nice. And... This is the Pokemon Nursery. So yeah, you can leave some Pokemon there. It's a separate system than the uh, the Nursery on Route 5, which we'll get to later. All right, so this is an area called the Giant's Cap. It's, uh, let me show you where it is. It's in the northern part, of course. It's kind of like this area here. And there's this path up on the, uh, the western side leads over to a berry tree, but there's also this item right here, which is a Dawnstone. Rather handy, you can use that on um, male Curlia or female Snorun to evolve them into their alternate evolutions, which is pretty handy. All right, so this is an area called, what is this place called? This is the Dusty Bowl, kind of in the center of the northern point, and over by this big kind of rocky structure here, there's a Sunstone, which is pretty handy. All right, so in North Lake Mylock, do you see that 
little cliffside over there, it's kind of on the edge. Like, here's the bridge that leads to the northern area. But, oh, let me get this really fast. Yeah, so if you go over here to the top of that little cliff there, nestled kind of just past the grass over here is a Thunderstone, which is rather helpful. You can use that to evolve Pikachu in Raichu and then, of course, Eevee into Jolteon. All right, I guarantee you I did not show you everything there is to do in this wild area. I'm sure there were some items that I missed here. This is not the only time we'll be in the wild area, don't worry. I just wanted to give you a taste of what it's all about and to show you some of the more helpful things during your first trip through the wild area. But as I mentioned, you need to go to these stairs here to arrive in Moto Stoke. 